Federal prosecutors have proposed a start date for Donald Trump's trial on charges related to his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election results in a filing yesterday. Special counsel Jack Smith, not deranged, uh, asked for the judge to have the trial start on January the 2nd. 2024 to, quote, vindicate the public's strong interest in a speedy trial, an interest guaranteed by the Constitution. Trump's lawyers, however, argued that it's the defendant who is guaranteed the right to a speedy trial. And in this case, one would not benefit their client. Now they have till next Thursday to propose their own start date, which is likely to be after the 2024 election. Dave, I got a feeling. I got a feeling. The judge is going to be a lot closer to the prosecutor's date than whatever date Donald Trump's legal team comes up with, because it's going to be so far removed yeah, from, so, from, from a, a rational date. Yeah, I think this is the case that's going to go first. You don't have the complicated SEPA issues like you do in the documents case. You don't have the need to get security clearances. And you've got a judge and Judge Tutkin who wants to keep the ball rolling. So I think this is going first. But this is still a complicated case over seven states, six different unindicted co-conspirators. I mean, these are serious charges, not as serious as like wearing a tan suit, but serious exactly. enough <laughs> that it would be delayed, I think, beyond January. But I still think it goes before the documents case and definitely before the election. Yeah. And, and, and Jackie, I mean, we've been looking at these different cases and it does seem does it not that this january 6th case even though the scope of the crime seems so much larger to the general public actual charges are pretty tight right compared to the documents case which again seems like they have him dead to right there but you do have so many national security issues in that that are just going to take a long time to wade through and we haven't spoken to jack smith himself about this but what we've heard uh, from you know, uh, experts, former prosecutors, people in his outer circle, is that this was done purposefully in order to sort of skirt some of the other delays and road bumps and speed bumps that could come up in if his scope was a little bit broader, if there were right. uh, actually indicted co-conspirators. But instead, he's going strictly after Trump. Um, even Judge Eileen Cannon, who is, as we all know, a bit some more sympathetic towards Trump, had rejected their ask for the case being after the 2024, 2024 election. It's yeah. still sort of a uh, crazy to say 2024 election out, out loud. <laughs> um, like I said, things are moving fast. Yeah, I mean, and so, on. you know, if she, if you have someone like her who's giving, moving yeah. up trial times, uh, it, it's more than likely Judge Tanya Chuckin's going to uh, rule in favor of prosecutors and Jack Smith. By the way, l let's talk about Judge Cannon for a second. I haven't talked to you since that very interesting order that came out a couple of days ago. She did a couple of things that seemed bizarre. She did. She did something that Trump's lawyers didn't even ask for. Question the propriety of the grand jury that exists in D.C. and expose it to the public. You're allowed to have another why, grand jury. Why, why would she do that? She knows that in cases there are more than one grand jury. Often there are more than one grand jury. Why would she expose another grand jury? You know, it's interesting, Joe. Uh, Trump lawyer Trusty, Jim Trusty, was on a right-wing show and said there's a problem with having this separate grand jury. This was the day before the ruling came out. And so it made some people think that, was that a message sent from Trump's team to the judge? Now, I'm not going to accuse anyone of impropriety, but it is peculiar that she decided to do that when no one asked for that to be briefed. And she said, now I want you to tell me whether you can have a second grand jury, but a second grand jury can be used to investigate other crimes and to indict other people. So I think this issue is really bizarre, and it makes me think that we're back to the Judge Cannon of 2022 instead of right. Judge Cannon 2.0. Yeah, I mean, and you look, Jonathan O'Meara, just not not to get off on on this issue too long, but I mean, if you go <laughs> if you go to the Drudge Report on any given day, you see the mistakes that she's made. You know, she she's she's just not had much trial experience. But in this case, it seems all the mistakes are breaking Trump's way, at least in the documents case, which, again, why we're saying this, this explains in part, I think, why, why Jack Smith kept, kept his, his indictment so tight of Donald Trump, because he's in a rocket docket and that thing's going to actually move. Yeah, any 50-50 ball in this case is going to Trump. 
uh, from Judge Cannon. That, that she's been very deferential to his team's arguments, and that does seem why that Jack Smith is trying to move forward on a tight case here on the election interference. And, and Susan Glasner, it's not just that it's January 2nd, the day after New Year's, which Trump was fixated on in his tr uh, Truth Social post, but that's less than two weeks out from the Iowa caucus, that Iowa is January 15th. So Donald have Trump- they, Have they set that already? January 15th? January 15th okay. is the Republican date for the right. Iowa caucus. Uh, so that's less than two weeks out. So this is good. This is just the first example of how often that the, his, Donald Trump's legal issues are going to overshadow his efforts to come back to the White House. Well, that's right. I mean, there's a collision course that's happening. Uh, there's no question about it between the 2024 primaries and, you know, Donald Trump's rolling courtroom dates in 2024. My, my concern for a while has been, though, that, you know, millions of Republican voters will have ended up voting before these charges end up being resolved. I mean, you know, January 2nd is an opening bid from the prosecutors. Let's stipulate to the idea that the judge uh, wants it to move forward quickly and that it slips not too much. Well, that means you're going to have this extraordinary split screen spectacle of uh, Donald Trump uh, on trial in a criminal courtroom every day. You have to show up for that, unlike a, a civil case, uh, right in the middle of the campaigning. So he will will be basically fusing his campaign message is that he's a victim in this courtroom. And we've already seen, I think, a preview of the kind of vituperative uh, attacks that he's going to, to launch as part of both his legal defense and his political defense. So I'm just really concerned that we're hurtling towards a kind of unprecedented, once again, crisis, you know, from Donald Trump, uh, you know, his incredible uh, uh, self-absorption is leading us right back into a, a national drama in which we're not going to be able to get this guy out of our heads. 2024 is going to be, once again, uh, the personal drama of Donald Trump inflicted on all of us, really. Uh Yikes. Uh, thank you so much for that, Susan. We are now depressed for the rest of 2023 and all of 2024, and we fear into 2025.